Painting video demo number one, gradient painting technique. So for all your painting videos, you're gonna need your packet of acrylic paints, a water container, several paper towels, your set of brushes, and a pencil. So go grab those materials now, along with your sketchbook and come back. All right, so we have addressed a lot of the color theory that we're gonna talk about, and I'm gonna demonstrate by mixing the colors on the canvas uh, in your impossible room, right? We know about cool shadows. We know about warm highlights. We know about how to blend those on the paper together. So if you think of a gradient painting technique, it's kind of, think of it as like wet, colored pencil technique, if you will, right? So there's three distinct features to this technique. And if you wanna write this down in your sketchbook, you can, especially if you plan on using all four in the shattered image painting option. So gradient techniques always start with base colors. Your brush strokes always follow the contour of what you're painting, just like it did with the colored pencil. And you're gonna be mixing your highlights, your shadows, and your neutrals right on the canvas before the paint dries. So if you wanna pause the video and write those three things down, now you can. So I'm gonna start with just a basic form, right? We'll do an apple. And this is just gonna be a quick demonstration of how to follow the contour, how to add the contours, etc. You will also need palette paper. So if you didn't get that before, grab that now. I forgot to mention that, sorry. There's my palette paper, right? So you can just rip a sheet of that off. I'm gonna have my palette paper over here. So the paints have probably been setting for a while. You'll want to shake the bottles up really well. And I'm gonna start with a base red. And this, this paint is a heavy body acrylic. It's a little bit heavier than craft paint, it goes a long way, so don't start with anything more than say a quarter size of any given color. I'm gonna need some blue for some cool shadow, and it won't be much, so probably half as much blue, just a dab. Some yellow. and some white. So pause the video and get those four colors out and ready to use. All right, so for this technique, we are going for a smooth, paint application with gradual progressions from lights to darks and cools to warms. So I'm gonna start with a base color. And when you paint, your handle, your bristles always follow your handle, right? We never push the paint this way. And we're gonna let the straight edge of that brush to find the edge of, my, of our apple here. Now, acrylics do dry pretty fast. Not instantly, not like watercolor. You've got a little bit of time and you can always 
add some water to it. All right, so I'm gonna clean my brush, and you always clean your brush before you pull another color off of your palette, right? So on this wet side, I'm now just gonna take, whoops, the smallest amount of blue, and I'm gonna mix that right into the red. And that's gonna give you a cool shadow. It's gonna give you some purple. So see how I pulled a little off to the side there? That lets me pull some paint for just this one section. <clears throat> I can clean the brush and then with a dry brush, go back in and smooth that transition out a little bit. Or you can go back in with a little bit of the base color and add some of that red back in. So if this is the shaded side of my apple over here, all right, that means the light source and the reflection would be over here. So I'm gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pull a little bit of yellow. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the highlighted side. If your base color dries before you get the next color on it, right? <clears throat> Add some more back in there. And it may take a couple coats. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna let that area dry before I put my bright highlight in. <clears throat> with the white and I'm going to go ahead and make my stem and my leaf so I'm going to make that green you've got to make your secondary colors because all you have are your primaries and anytime you're using blue it's going to take twice as much yellow as blue so always start with a very small amount and you can add if you need to Again, I'm following the contour. And then I'm gonna add some blue to the bottom edge of that leaf there. And the inside of the stem. And I'm mixing it right on the canvas. Now, here is the nice thing about acrylic. If you get something on there that you just absolutely hate, you're like, oh my gosh, I think I've ruined it. Don't freak out because we can paint right over it and start over from scratch if we need to, right? There is some um, ability to correct because it's opaque. You don't really get that necessarily with watercolors. All right, so I'm gonna add my highlight here, and then I'm gonna clean my brush, and I'm gonna just dry brush it in. Again, following the contour. Blending as you go. If it's not getting bright enough, you can wait for that area to dry, go work on something else, and then come back to it with another layer of highlight. Okay, but that would be an example of gradient painting technique.
So a clean brush acts almost like a burnishing pencil, right? It allows you to blend. If you use a clean brush or layer highlights and shadows into it as you go. 